How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Leprechaun 4 in Space. This is from 1996 and is directed by Brian Trichard Smith. He's the same guy who did Part 3, so he's coming back for this one. And once again, we star Wark Davis as the titular Leprechaun. Uh, on the human side this time around, we have Brent Jas uh, Jasper and Jessica Collins. And this one's about a team of soldiers, very much like the Colonial Marines from Aliens. And they're going to kill an alien that they don't know is a Leprechaun and save this princess. They bring the princess aboard their ship, but of course the Leprechaun follows and wants his bride back. And on top of all that, there's a mad scientist to create even more wacky shenanigans going on here. So, uh, first and foremost, I guess you got to talk about the title, Leprechaun 4 in Space. This is a prime example of the wacky concept title movie, you know? Uh, you can see that titles like this, Leprechaun in Space, would eventually pave the way for titles like Sharknado, you know? Something so crazy and so big and so extreme, you have to see it just because of the title. And yeah, it's not the first to do something like this. I mean, there's been tons of 50s monster movies that do the same thing. But this is definitely a major footnote in the wacky title subgenre. Can you believe they put the leprechaun in space? Now, that being said, does the movie actually hold up to the wacky, crazy title? Uh, sadly, no. It's not a bad movie, but it's definitely an underwhelming movie, you know? Um, it's, yeah, it's not the best. Uh, I guess first, the budget in this movie is definitely a problem. The budget will lead to things like laser tag sets and pretty bad examples of 90s CGI. And also, the humor isn't as on point as it was in Part 3. You know, Part 3... Definitely a high point, wacky shenanigans, and maybe it's because they spent so much of the budget on the setting, which I guess is the point of this movie. Maybe that didn't leave enough budget for wacky antics, you know? It kind of leads to Leprechaun shows up, he's in a gunfight, and then they wander kind of aimlessly through the ship. It's not near as funny, and the jokes aren't near as good, and if you aren't going to be, like, you know, wacky and telling jokes and doing shenanigans... You know, maybe you can get humor by playing it so straight, and then the leprechaun comes up and it's this monkey wrench into an otherwise serious movie, but they don't really do that either. In fact, a big thing with this movie is they don't even know he's a leprechaun. They call him an alien the whole time, and that whole, he's a leprechaun but he's in space, that doesn't really come up in the movie because none of the characters get he's a leprechaun. Which is super weird because usually he won't shut up about how much he loves to be a leprechaun. But in this movie, the, the characters don't even know. And if the characters don't know, you can't get that humor of, hey, there's a leprechaun in space, you know? So, so that is definitely a problem. Another big thing with this movie is it has a serious problem with direction and purpose, you know? I, I talked about in the first three movies, I thought it was kind of funny. The Leprechaun had a different weakness each time, you know, the Clover, the Wrought Iron, the Medallion. But in this movie, he has no real weaknesses. And after you see him survive getting, you know, gunned down in a hail of gunfire, but he gets back up again, the characters have no way of killing him, so in turn, no direction. Wander around, get into a pointless gunfight, wander around again. And also, he's going after the princess... No one's really stopping him, you know? The princess is just kind of in a room somewhere with, you know, one guy watching the door. The only reason he doesn't get her immediately is he doesn't know where she is and has to wander the ship to find her. So, yeah, definitely a problem with direction in this movie. You know, direction and reason and just kind of wonders about. You know, they kill a bunch of time, like... There's a break room with a disco ball, and they just kind of hang out there and dance. Uh, there's a bunch of contract negotiations. Hey, you only have my team of Colonial Marines for a few more hours. Oh, but there's a subcontract here. 
where if there's an emergency, okay, but we want a bonus, let's negotiate our bonus, and it, no one cares about that. And there's also the main guy's a marine, the girl is a scientist, and there's a whole bunch of, I, I'm, I'm smarter than I look, and well, I'm tougher than I look, and it ultimately goes nowhere and is very cliche character versus character, and yeah, so not really the best there as far as, you know, what we actually fill the time with. And this is space, you could have done so much more, you know, a whole bunch of strange aliens and different planets, but I guess that is the budget. You know, we get the planet the leprechaun's on and then like, you know, one, two other aliens, that's, that's it. You know, I remember what a lot of people talked about is in this movie, the leprechaun pulled out a lightsaber and everybody was talking about this movie. The leprechaun's in space, there's a, a lightsaber, he uses a lightsaber. But then when you actually see the movie, the leprechaun uses the lightsaber for, for one scene, and it's not even that memorable. But this was back before the internet was really big like it is now, and you had, you know, people doing these crazy crossovers and wacky gags, you know. I, I, I just want to say... In 1996, the leprechaun using a lightsaber, even if it was just for one scene, was a super big deal. But nowadays, we're like, wait, he just has a lightsaber in one scene and that's it? So yeah, that's a thing too. But granted that this is a direct-to-video movie and it's the fourth leprechaun movie in four years, Granted, the time constraints and the budget constraints that would undoubtedly come from that, it's still fine. There's some stuff I like, you know, the princess is a different and unique character for this movie. The finale, there's some crazy stuff towards the end I really like. And, you know, the space setting really did shake things up. It's just not as wacky and imaginative as part three and is overall kind of a standard B sci-fi movie. But we have the leprechaun in it. So yeah, I wish it had done more, I wish it had been bigger, I wish it had been wackier and funnier, but yeah, standard sci-fi movie with the leprechaun in it, not great, but when you happen to, you know, what this movie is really made for, getting people to rent the VHS or stopping you when you're strolling through cable channels and you go, wait a minute, is that the leprechaun? Why is he in space? And then you stop scrolling channels. So it does what it means to do. It's just not the best thing ever. Uh, without further ado, let's go and talk a bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I want to analyze the film, you know, so I'll be avoiding the end bits. Anyway, we open up with the leprechaun, and he's kidnapped a princess, and he says he wants to marry this princess, and if he does that, he'll get political power. He wants to be King Leprechaun, ruler of his own planet. And the princess, at first, isn't on board, but when she finds out the leprechaun has literally billions of dollars in gold, she's a very vain person, so she finds out about the gold, and she wants to marry this guy now. I, I kind of wonder, are they saying it's a thousand years since part two? Because in part two he was going to marry someone, and they said he could only do this every thousand years? I know. It's a leprechaun movie, don't think about the continuity. Anyway, uh, he wants to marry her, but there's a group of colonial marines coming down to this planet. You see, there's an alien, they, they call it an alien, they don't know it's a leprechaun, who's been disrupting mining operations, obviously looking for that gold. And they know there's an alien disrupting mining operations, they track him down here, and they kill the leprechaun. They actually throw a grenade on the floor, and the leprechaun dives onto it and blows up. So I don't know if the leprechaun was being selfish, uh, self, selfless, or if he knew that, hey, I have magical powers, I'm just going to come back anyway. So they blow up the leprechaun, and they take the princess back, but she's unconscious at this point. And... The, there's one colonial marine who decides to pee on the leprechaun, like, hey, we killed it, let's pee on it, I guess. And we see electricity travel from the leprechaun up into him. And that is going to be what brings the leprechaun back. 
they go back aboard the ship and the leprechaun literally burst out of this guy's crotch. A few things, one, when they show the leprechaun start to burst out, I was hoping it would be a chest burster parody, you know? But sadly, he jumps out fully formed. I feel it was a missed opportunity, especially when we saw the leprechaun's head earlier. I thought it was going to be, you know, it looked a little bit like a parody of the android head from the first Alien movie. But sadly, he just jumps out fully formed. Also, strangely enough, this is not the first time that a slasher villain has come back because someone peed on them. Uh, that was it, Nightmare on Elm Street 4? Uh, anyway, so the leprechaun's running around the ship now, and he wants his bride back. Now, the humans want to hang on to the bride because, A, if they get her back to the king, then that will uh, make Earth have positive relations with the king's planet, you know? So, good diplomatic relations. The mad scientist is... Um, Wanting her for his own means, though, you see that alien species has regenerative properties in their blood, so he wants to harvest her blood and make a sort of super healing medicine out of it, and the leprechaun wants to get her for political power for his own means, but they're not really too concerned with protecting her. The leprechaun just doesn't know where she is, and we run randomly throughout the ship. Our main girl is a scientist, she was assigned to accompany the Colonial Marines because, you know, she needed to get samples of any aliens they found, again, looking for that blood. And she's there, and their sergeant, who is this guy with the steel plate in his head, picks the male lead and says, hey, you watch over her, make sure she doesn't get herself killed. And there's this whole thing about how she doesn't want guns, but she can still, you know, defend herself. She's tougher than she looks. And the guy wants to prove his worth that he's not just a dumb colonial marine. And of course, the two quite quickly fall in love with each other. But yeah, it's just kind of a so-so uh, cliched relationship. And they'll run around the ship fighting off the leprechaun. But again, it's just random bouts of gunfire. Once you realize he has no weakness, it's just sort of, hey, there's the leprechaun, let's shoot him. He didn't die again, let's go over here and let's shoot him. And the plot from there just gets kind of rambly until we get to the end. So yeah, not the best plot, random gunfights, far less imaginative and crazy. Like, part three really was a high point. You had several crazy things going on. And it feels like until we get to the finale in this movie... There's no wacky, crazy, and imaginative stuff. Yeah, there's a few fun kills, but the, where it gets to at the end, some creatures, uh, the way some characters change, I feel like that should have happened much earlier on, and we got something bigger and wackier throughout the whole movie. So yeah, the finale's fine, but it's just leading up to the finale. There's just not as much going on here. They relied on the crazy concept but then didn't actually fill out the movie good enough. So yeah, there's some stuff I like. But overall, it's just so-so. Now, kind of ironically, I think it was the same year, 1996, that Pinhead would also go to space in the Hellraiser series, Hellraiser Bloodline, and then quite famously, Jason would go to space too in Jason X. So an early example of slasher characters going to space if only we got that Hellraiser Leprechaun Jason X crossover. Uh, but whatever. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You're really helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This will be the Leprechaun playlist. You can find my reviews for parts 1 through 3, as well as Full Moon's Unlucky Charms. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Leprechaun playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.